Water, water everywhere. It's a pretty popular saying, but without a drop of truth for some folks in one beautiful part of our country. We saw firsthand how they struggle to get by when we traveled there for our Sunday morning cover story. It's easy to miss this corner of the Navajo Nation, just 100 miles west of Albuquerque. Most things pass the reservation right by, including progress. Many of the roads here are unpaved. The electricity is spotty. Unemployment in the area hovers near 70%. But perhaps most shocking of all, an estimated 40% of the people who live here don't have access to running water. And the sink, what does the sink do? We don't use the sink because there's no running water. It's just there. Yeah. Loretta Smith and her husband share this small mobile home with their disabled granddaughter, Brianna. Seven? That's how old? With no indoor plumbing, what little water the family has inside is carried in, bucket by bucket, stored in plastic barrels outside. Do you feel sort of forgotten out here? Yes, for sure, yeah. The area's main source of drinking water is miles away, in the parking lot of the St. Bonaventure Indian Mission in the town of Thiru, New Mexico. Okay. Getting water here can mean a 100-mile round trip for some families. And the mission's office manager, Cindy Howe, says many don't even have access to a car. What happens when they run out of water? If they don't have any water, it's just they don't have any water. And I just... Sometimes I get so frustrated. Why is it? Why can't people get water? And that's where Darlene Arviso comes in. They call her the water lady. Every day, Darlene loads up her big yellow tanker truck and takes to the roads to deliver something most of us take for granted. When I see her coming, I get, yes, yes, water. <laughs> Darlene is Navajo, born and raised right here on the reservation. Pretty much know everybody, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's used to carrying precious cargo. She's been driving the school bus on the reservation for years. But her water route is a job that she considers almost sacred. Uh, I'm proud of what I'm doing for my people, and I love my job, so. Do you? Yes, I do. What do you love about it so much? Like, mm, I go out every day to meet different families, yeah. There are 250 homes on her route, and she can only get to each family once a month, and sometimes not even then if the mud gets too thick. Which is why when she does make it, it's yeah, often treated like, like a celebration. <laughs> Nina Garcia has never had a day with running water in her life. Unlike the rest of us who use about 100 gallons of water a day, Nina has been getting by on only about seven gallons. That's a hard truth that Darlene has a hard time watching. Sometimes I wish I could do more. How do they make it last so long? Well, they just have to stretch out their water and, yeah. I say this, you know, as having been raised Catholic with full knowledge of what I'm saying. <laughs> Darlene Arviso is a living saint. The fact that this man, George McGraw, is on this reservation at all is a testament to just how dire the Navajo situation is. Do you see yourself? <laughs> he runs a nonprofit called Dig Deep. He normally works in developing countries, digging wells in places like South Sudan, Kashmir, and Cameroon. But now, the problem is right in his backyard. I really had no concept that this kind of material poverty existed in the U.S. But it does. The question is, why? It should be regarded as a national embarrassment. We took that question to Dan McCool, a political science professor at the University of Utah, who studied Indian water rights for the last 40 years. How is this possible in this day and age that Americans don't have running water? American Indians in Arizona and New Mexico were not allowed to vote until 1948. They did not have a voice. They weren't in line politically when the money, the funding, the projects, and the water was being allocated. So the only source of water left for the Navajo is groundwater, 
lying deep beneath the hard rock of the Continental Divide. We took this project to hydrogeologists, to engineers, to construction specialists all over the country, even here in the Southwest. And everyone said, well, this is one of the most challenging projects we've ever seen. Even if they can find water, it might not be drinkable. You'd probably start to hit water here at about 600 feet, but the water you'd get out would be laced with uranium. That's from years of mining on the reservation during World War II. Older water wells dot the landscape. Sarah Begay, who's lived on the reservation all her life, took us to this one. It's still pumping water, but few dare drink from it anymore. For years, I mean, maybe a good 20, 30 years. It was fine. It was fine. And then what happened? Uh, people started getting sick. So dig deep must dig deeper, and the clock is ticking. Running out of water by the middle of the month is, is a painful experience. And most of them do. Yeah. Most of them still do. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lindsay Johnson makes sure she doesn't run out. She has a system to conserve every drop Darlene delivers. What would you do without her? I don't know. <laughs> Aside from her morning coffee mug, she uses only paper plates and cups so she doesn't have to wash dishes. Like her fellow Navajos, Lindsay shares her home with as many as eight other people. When it comes to washing hair, two, maybe three of them will all use the same water. <laughs> Lindsay's 16-year-old granddaughter, Yvonne, says almost everyone here finds ways to cope without running water, but few want to talk about it. People don't share their stories. Yeah. I don't either. You don't tell them? Um, because why? Um, it's like, it's kind of embarrassing. It's just hard. So who's to blame for this? The counties and the states say, oh, it's the federal responsibility. And the feds say, well, we're broke. It's the states and the county's responsibility. It's a lot of finger pointing. Oh, yes, yeah, a lot of passing the buck. And so the Navajo wait. Has Darlene kept you updated on everything going on with the well, the new yeah. one? Yeah. Georgia's Dig Deep Well is coming along but it will cost close to $500,000 to complete. And all of it is funded by donations. It's where we but even if the well gets up and pumping, Darlene still won't be out of a job. A new well doesn't mean homes will suddenly have new plumbing. What it means is clean water will be more readily accessible, a first step. The next will be building gravity-fed storage tanks like these that could be hooked up to faucets inside. But that's several years and probably countless fundraisers away. Things are not simple here. But every time we have even the smallest success in this project, those little moments are yeah. so tremendously impactful for me. I think I'm really starting to live for this project. It's, it's, it's ours. Do you think you'll ever see a day where everyone here has water? I just hope so. <laughs> I just pray and that they'll have running water, yeah. A simple wish the Navajo people hope won't just be a drop in an already 